What's up, YTPC? Uncle Willie coming to you on this Cobb Tuesday from the Mobile Lounge. I am smoking my Radiche Faux Bamboo Poker. I am smoking, which I think I need to, uh, need to run a pipe cleaner down in there. Because I've been smoking this about half a bowl, and it's got a little bit of moisture coming in it. Not much. I am smoking some salty dogs. Dan Tobacco Salty Dogs. Somebody asked me yesterday if I would uh, review it. So I don't know if it's a review or my thoughts or what it is, but here we go. So I have smoked multiple bags, pouches, plugs of Salty Dogs. I got this in 2022. And I got it from Estrevals over in Germany. And it was like $8 a bag then. I haven't looked recently, but I know it's still a lot cheaper there than it is here. But they've changed their shipping where... You have to order about $200 worth of stuff for the shipping to be worth it. But once you make that purchase and you get that order, it comes like a week. It it doesn't take two it doesn't take two, three weeks a month. It doesn't take like it used to. Years back it would take three or four weeks to get your order, sometimes six weeks. Now, they put it on a dedicated flight, DHL, and it's over here in about five days. So, that's pretty damn good. So, I looked up my buddy, Jim Inks. Because you know that's what I do. He says that is tangy, the Virginia's in it, is tangy, Dark stewed fruit and citrus. Earthy wood and floral. I don't get... I get the wood. I get the dark Virginias. I just not a hay or grassy that you get from the uh, light Virginias. And the Perique is very mild. And I'll give him that one also. He said that it's like raisins, figs, plums, and dates. Well, that would be a typical Perique. But you don't get a lot of that because there's not a lot of it in there. The Perique isn't... I don't know if it's St. James Parish Perique or where it come from, where they Periqued it from. <laughs> but it's not... You don't pick a lot of it up. In the bag note, jar note, I get, I get the Virginias, a touch of anise, not a lot, it's not, it's not overbearing, and the anise doesn't come through just a little. Once in a while, you'll get a little anise flavor, but it's not a, it, a, and it's like in passing. When you retrohale, you might be like, hmm, I think I tasted some anise there. Then you take a couple puffs and you don't get nothing. You just get the Virginia's, the, the one way, the one flavor. And then a few minutes later, you, you might touch, get a touch of anise. And it makes you go, 
I swear I, th I tasted anise, but then it's gone again. So it's not like it's full of it, like uh, Red Horse Bar. That plug is, is anise from Jump Street. This has just got a little bit of anise in the, in the jar note, but that's it. It's a very dense plug. You can pull it apart on flakes. I don't recommend that. I recommend it cutting it long way. So when you rub it out, it'll turn into like a ribbon cut. And that way you can rub it out. I usually take a plug, a flake, and triple rub out my flakes whenever I I'm smoking flake tobacco. This, I recommend doing it the old CJ garage method. And that's using a grinder. Cut that up into flakes. Put the flakes into here. Take it and grind it. Just keep turning it like back and forth. And turn it in one direction. Until it's easy to turn. Once it's easy to turn. It's ground up. And you'll have some stuck in the lid and some stuck in there. And you just take it and get it out of here and whatever you got to do. Take your... And just run it around inside and get it all loosened up. A lot of it will come down through these holes and land in here on that screen. Just dump it all out onto your valet, and you're in business. Once you get it where the smoking size that you want, fire it up and go for it. What I get out of it is is a it's a very good Virginia. Preak is light. It's got a rum topping, a Caribbean rum topping. But it doesn't make it aromatic. You can't taste the rum. You can probably smell a little bit of rum in the in the bag or the tin the jar note. But you don't really taste it in the bowl. And it's a good full flavor. Good full flavor, Virginia, that doesn't bite. On a scale of one to five, I would give it a strong three and a half. Like I said, the Perique doesn't shine. And that's, that's a good thing with this one. Even though it's a vapor, the Perique doesn't, doesn't kill it. It's not spicy. Like some Perique's, it, it, you get that spice in your nose. This, you, won't, you don't get that. I'd say if you get a chance to try it, try it. After me buying all those bags for eight dollars a piece, it's hard for me to say buy it for twenty. I think it's twenty two at Boswell's. It's twenty or twenty two, twenty one, whatever at smoking pipe. It's like twenty bucks a bag almost everywhere, and it's only fifty grams. So that's like spending 20 bucks on a tin of tobacco. Some tobaccos are worth 20 bucks a tin. Some tobaccos, not so much. You would have to determine if this was your $20 price range or not and unfortunately the only way you're gonna know is if you buy it unless 
somebody gifts you some. Which I might be doing that, but it'll be next quarter. I don't know. But, yeah. Good, very good. Dan Tobacco sources good Virginias to put in this. I mean, I, all I can say is this like a Virginia to me. It's good. I don't taste the raisins, figs, plums, and dates. I don't taste those like Jim Inc. suggests that, that's, that they're in there. I would say get some. And then if you don't like it, you can just say, well, damn it, Willie, you stared me wrong. I'm sure you've blown 20 bucks on something before that wasn't worth 20 bucks. So, going to get some if you can. And that lint looked like it flew down and went in my mouth, but I didn't taste anything. <laughs> I think that's what's flying around in here is dust. I was called out last week to, if I cleaned my car, I wouldn't be so dusty. Or if I kept the windows up. Anyway. So I was watching David, St. David's Pipes. And he was talking about going to, uh, to the grocery, going to the store the other day. And if you know Dave, he, he clenches his pipe. So he's got a pipe in his mouth. And he's smoking it all the way up to the door of the store. He takes it out, puts it in his coat pocket, goes in to do his shopping or whatever. Well, he said this lady gave him a a really look, you know, a strange look. Like she didn't know what was what to think. And I thought that was kind of funny because we have. I mean, I can, if, if I could still throw like I used to, I could throw a rock or a baseball and hit the apartment building that's over there. And there's, there's a dozen apartment buildings over there at the end of our street. People use this as their walking area. And as a matter of fact, here comes a couple right now walking down the street, getting their exercise our, our neighborhood is goes around like in a circle and it will it it acts like it's a I think it's like a mile all the way around so people use it for walking exercise whatever well when I'm out here like right now that lady just gave me a funny look because when I started going like this she got ready to throw her hand up and wave because she thought I was waving but when I'm sitting out here doing my videos or just smoking when I'm out here by myself or whatever, people from the apartments and from the neighborhood down the street and whatever, they come by and they'll see me with a pipe. And I've had some, some people look at me and see the pipe and they just get a big smile on their face because they think I'm smoking weed. They think that I've got you know, a different kind of pipe. Some people walk by, they don't even pay no attention to me. A lot of times people walk by, they don't even know I'm sitting out here. They don't look this way. They don't look at the cars as they go by, which I'm glad. Because if I, if I seen somebody looking at the cars every time they come by, I would think that they were staking it out. You know what I mean? So it's kind of funny. I get the I get that that look too, Dave, with somebody that is like, you know, they don't they don't know what you're doing, and I mean I'm innocent smoking a bowl of tobacco, but if I was smoking a bowl of weed, it's legal, so it wouldn't be no 
no harm, no foul if I was. They, if the, if the police came by and assumed I was smoking and stopped or whatever, if it was weed, they would have a 50-50 chance of trying to charge me because it's legal. I'm in a confined area, so I'm not smoking it in public. If my vehicle is running, then they've got the the ammo on their side to say that I was driving because the vehicle's running. If the vehicle isn't running, it's going to be a 50-50 chance of them to try to prove it if I was smoking weed. But as soon as they come up and see what I got, they're going to just laugh at yourself and, and go away. But I know years ago, if your key was in your ignition, even if the car wasn't running, and you were sitting in the car and you were drinking a beer, mixed drink, any kind of alcoholic beverage, if your key was just in the ignition, they got you for driving under the influence. Not driving drunk, not drunk driving, not a DUI, but driving under the influence. And that's different. I mean, years ago, it used to be a, a fine for... For drinking and driving is what the, the, fine, the fine was. And back in those days, most of the time, if you were close to home, they would just tell you, go drive home and don't go nowhere else. Unless you were too drunk, then they would take you home. Not anymore. I remember many a night when I was, <clears throat> I was a young boy, under the age 10, we we would get a knock on the door, like in the summertime or whatever, we'd have the front door open, and you get a knock on the screen door, and you look up, and there's two policemen standing there, and they would have my Uncle Cecil, and he's like, they'd be like, hello, and my mom would usually answer the door, because my dad was usually in bed by that time, they'd be like, do you know this gentleman? He gave us this address and said that uh, he was, this was the next to Kent. We, my mom was like, yes, he's family. And they, she would take him in. And he would sleep on the couch till the next day. But they used to bring you home. Instead of taking you to jail, if you were close enough, because where I grew up, there was a bar like two miles up the road. There was a bunch of them up there in, in what we called Uptown. And there's a bunch of them. He used to go to the one that's called the Derby. And he would get drunk, and he'd leave out of the bar walking. Because he didn't drive. I was, he'd get somebody to drop him off up there or whatever. And uh, they'd pick him up for drunk in public. And they'd just bring him home, bring him to the house. And he never went to court, never got a ticket. It's just because he's like, yeah, can I? They're like, yeah. where do you live at? He's like, well, my niece lives up here, whatever. And cause he was my uh, grandma's brother by marriage or one of those deals, you know. His family, somehow he was added to the family or whatever. But. <laughs> I don't know how I got into to that. One thing just leads to another, but yeah, they used to bring Uncle Cecil to the house, and he'd sleep on the couch. And he used to, he would always be. He called everybody honey. And back in the '60s, you know, that was common. He he would, my family called me Junior, and he would he'd be sitting there on the couch, and he'd be like, Junior, honey. I'll get you. I'll give you a nickel if you get me a glass of water. So I'd go get him a glass of tap water, bring it back, and he'd give me a nickel, and he would drink part of it, and then he would say, "If the Lord made any water better than this, he kept it for himself," and then he would drink more out of it. And I, that was a saying that that we used to do joking about Uncle Cecil, you know. We, 
<laughs> for a long time. God rest his soul, but yeah, he, he used to come to the house being drunk. Uh, give me a nickel for every glass of water I'd get him. Sometimes, sometimes by the time the night was over, I'd have 25 cents. He'd give me a nickel for every glass of water I got him. As soon as he finished the glass of water, I'd be like, you want another glass of water, Uncle Cecil? <laughs> I'm trying to get them nickels adding up. <laughs> oh, my, I guess I'm going to jump. That was enough memory lane for me. Hope y'all guys have a good rest of your Cobb Tuesday. And remember, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And with that being said, until next time, you know what to do. Stuff them and puff them. <laughs>